I will be showing you how to go from this to this. I will be comparing and benchmarking each major setting for graphics and performance differences so you can better optimize the game for your system and I will be giving you my optimized settings as well. As for the CPU, the R5 3600X when CPU limited can reach 60 FPS but it is not a smooth experience as the 1% lows regularly dip to the 40s so if you have a similar CPU expect to play at these frame rates. For resolution upscaling, DLAA and DLSS quality look almost identical, while FSR2 at native and the quality option were noticeably worse and had much more visible shimmering and aliasing. So set this setting to DLSS quality for basically free FPS. I also found the overall image quality to be quite soft no matter what settings you chose. Thanks to one of my viewers, I was alerted that the post-processing quality setting has a bigger impact on performance if set to high when using upscaling, as high post processing does its thing at the final output resolution, while low does it at the internal resolution. In this scene, you can see it in action in the depth of field. This is the only noticeable visual difference I could find. During gameplay, there was zero difference in image quality, but there was a big impact on performance. So. Set this to low even if you're not using upscaling. The texture resolution setting doesn't seem to have any noticeable impact on textures, only how much VRAM it allocates. There is very little difference, if any, between the volumetric spotlight quality options. Set this to medium, as high can really impact performance whenever there is a scene with a lot of volumetric spotlights. Although it's not shown in this video, as I didn't have enough time to find the right scene. The shadow detail setting is most likely broken as I couldn't find any difference in the many scenes I tested and the performance is identical as well.
I have used two types of maximum settings alongside my optimized settings. One with all the ray tracing effects maxed out and one with them disabled. It's very clear that this is a very demanding game. Probably the most demanding game I have ever tested, ever. Technically speaking, it uses true next gen features and it mostly looks so too. One area I found the game to be lacking in though is the level of detail. From what I can tell, as the game uses standard LODs, objects noticeably pop in and out, even at max settings. This game sure could have used a feature like Nanite, but understandably, this game doesn't run on Unreal Engine 5. 